Welcome, bienvenidos to today's core coffee chat about using, uh, using uh, Unite Us to connect the community to resources. I'm Nicole Lezen. I'm one of the local consultants who facilitates a countywide initiative called the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based or Core Investments, along with Nicole Young. We're your hosts today, and we're joined by Katie Galanos and Marisol Cifuentes from Unite California, as well as representatives from several local organizations who will be sharing their experiences using this resource. We'll introduce them shortly. And as you can hear, our core institute events are held bilingually in English with Spanish interpretation. Today, Stella Lauerman is providing simultaneous interpretation and Gisela Carrasco, whose voice you're hearing is providing consecutive interpretation now. And she'll also translate your comments and questions in the chat. I will turn it over to Nicole Young, who's gonna give us a brief overview of core. Thanks, Nicole. So CORE stands for the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments. And we think of it as both a funding model and a movement to achieve equitable health and well-being in Santa Cruz County using a results-based collective impact approach that's responsive to community needs. And you'll see on the next slide that um, we really center our work and our focus on this mission and vision uh, around collective action, again, a safe, healthy community, equitable opportunities. So you'll see that equity is very much front and center in everything about core and this core framework. And when we talk about equitable health and well-being, we're talking about uh, really ensuring that there are opportunities to experience these eight interconnected core conditions for health and well-being health and wellness, lifelong learning and education, economic security and mobility, thriving families, community connectedness, healthy environments, safe and just community, and stable, affordable housing and shelter. And so those dotted lines really are meaningful uh, because we understand that uh, the presence or absence of well-being in one core condition is often caused or created by or influenced by what's happening in another dimension of well being. And so we really try to think about um, how to connect the dots and what are those policies and programs and practices that we could all be contributing to in order to ensure that there are those strong connections uh, focused on uh, increasing equity. And so events like today's Core Coffee Chat are part of what we call the Core Institute for Innovation and Impact, or the Core Institute. We have a variety of learning opportunities, trainings, technical assistance. Um, some of it is focused specifically on the core funding side of things, and others like today are really about the core movement. How do we build shared knowledge and skills and common use of tools that really help us get closer to that core mission and vision? We'll turn it over to Katie, who's going to present and demonstrate about Unite Us, and then we'll also have a chance to hear from some of you who are already using this resource locally. So Katie, over to you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, everyone, for giving Unite Us this space today. We're very excited to connect with you. We see a lot of familiar faces, some new faces. So excited to have today's discussion and an overview about uh, Unite Us and, and how it is helping our community coordinate care uh, together. I am going to share my screen with uh, some slides. While I'm doing that, I do want to just um, give my colleague, uh, Mary Soul, um, time and space to say hello to you as well. Hi, everyone. Uh, buenos dias. Uh, my name is Marisol Cifuentes, uh, and I am the cu Senior Customer and Community Success Manager here at Unite Us. I am also um, your point of contact as it relates to the work uh, that's happening here in Santa Cruz County. Um, and I work specifically with uh, SCIO, with PVUSD and the Alliance as well. So lots of intersections and it's great to see um, everyone's familiar faces as well. Thank you so much. And Katie, I'll turn it back over. Thanks. 
All right. So today we want to just be able to uh, provide you all with an overview of what Unite uh, is and has been doing in our community and the state of California as a whole. Um, and then for you all to be able to hear some shared partner experiences and then provided ample time for question answers. So if there's anything that um, comes to mind as I may be describing more about Unite Us or going through the demonstration of the platform, or then when you get to hear from our two partners, partners, um, please utilize, you know, the chat um, function, raise your hand. We want to make this as engaging and to make sure that your answers or your questions get answered today. Um, for just to kind of start off with um, just a general kind of definition or overview of Unitas's mission, it is that we want to unify our communities. And when we think about our communities, we have different pockets of work. We have our community-based organizations where most of you all are um, a part of that pocket. We then also have our government and public agencies. We have healthcare. And so all of these um, different um, parts need to be able to work together and to coordinate care together. And that is through and can be by, done by the Unite Us bi-directional referral platform. And so we'll get to see what that really means during the demonstration portion. But um, I also just want to have some key highlights uh, to share with that, which is to be able to centralize a, a greater understanding of what a client may need when a, a a need has been addressed or identified to allow partners to be able to have more of that ability and accessibility into understanding what that means. And then again, really just being able to centralize it through an actual technology infrastructure. A lot of us are still doing a lot of manual work, um, phone calls, emails, faxes, and then that follow-up can be really tedious and time consuming. So we want to be able to work together together. Um, so again, we're just keeping everything more centered around the client that is in need. Before we go into the demonstration portion of today, I did want to make sure that we just talk a little bit of about how Unite Us is secure and how we protect client information. And so this slide which will definitely be shared out with the group later. So you'll get to review all of this information. Um, I want to just highlight the fact that we are HIPAA compliant um, and SOC 2 type 2 certified, as well as 42 CFR part two. And so these are really important regulations when we think about, again, client privacy and making sure that um, Unite Us is doing our due diligence. We're adhering to those federal rules and regulations. Um, so again, everything is in compliance and safe from a client um, perspective. The one misconception that um, some folks have is as partners join the, the network and those organizations and those staff members begin using Unite Us, um, the misconception is that that means that you have access to all clients that are being, uh, you know, provided care through the community. And that is um, that is incorrect. So you would have access to the clients that have been directly referred to you through another partner or if you have gone through the process to add the client into your organization's um, you know, client list to then be able to share out. So again, it does not mean that you're just joining the network and then you have access to everyone. It's very much based on your organization. Um, and we hopefully will be making some meetings one-on-one -on -one to follow up with you all. And when we do have those follow-up conversations, we'll talk talk about, you know, which staff work with clients or which staff would you want to have access to Unite Us and talk through how we'll uh, utilize user roles to, again, safeguard information and really keep your internal team structure intact with how you all work in your normal day to day. Do we have any questions related to um, maybe client privacy or just anything that has been shared so far? Happy to take any questions.
So Sheree in the chat asked, how is this related to D by F? And I maybe I'm in spelling that acronym incorrect, but if you could maybe just elaborate a little bit. Data exchange framework. Got it. And so Marisol, maybe this is in connection to our work with Skyo. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, so this is all related. And I think, um, Becky, when you share a little bit more information about exactly what that looks like and how it's all related, you know, one of the things that we're really working towards, and um, we'll talk a little bit about this more, is to bring unity and remove the silos, remove the uh, fragmentation that's happening in the community. And so how do we better align, right? And with that said, um, this is going to help with our data exchange framework. There's, as you know, different um, organizations, projects, grants that are happening in the community. And every department has its own specific earmarked expectations and pieces and how do we come together and although Unitas is a solution that is working towards that I think the work that's happening with Skyo is also going to help support how we can um, disintegrate or remove some of these silos so that we're better informed and have and in alignment with the data exchange framework so I think um, Becky if you want to share more um, when we connect with you a little bit later, uh, that would be great. But I think that's um, the alignment that is happening there. Um, I hope that answered your question. Thank you. Wonderful. And before, great question, um, definitely great tee up for Becky. And then before I move on related to client privacy and protections, the one thing I want to call out, which again, we'll get to see this when I do the actual demonstration portion, is the client consent process. So this is another important thing because it directly connects into what HIPAA compliancy is. And that is allowing the client who is to be connected uh, through Unite Us to be able to give their consent that it is okay for their information to be shared through the Unite Us platform with another partner. So I just wanted to call that out before we moved on. And again, you know, we'll be seeing this together and what it really looks like in the platform. And so we've talked a little bit about this when I mentioned, again, just kind of like the mission and vision of Unite Us. And that is, again, kind of connected back to a data exchange framework, or when we think about anything related to care coordination, we want to have more visibility into a single client journey. So when we are all in community, no matter the pocket that we kind of um emerge in or stay in, we have to also understand kind of what's happening. So if a client is getting connected to the local food bank who also needs emergency services, who may also need mental health support, we want to be able to kind of pull those pieces together because it allows the providers to also be able to um, support the client in a more holistic way. And so this is something that you'll also get to see in real time when we do the demonstration. Um, but again, really just to reiterate this idea or this want, and I think this comes up, bubbles up all the time in community, especially around this theme of coordination. It's, well, we want to have understanding as to who's that, who is serving that client and then how we can then, you know, kind of help support um, and supplement that, that work or that care. And so here, just on the screenshot, we can see we have a client, Kiki Williams, that is actually being served for a few different needs right now. So emergency housing. Um, she actually also has a housing assistance application, you know, process that's being connected and then an emergency food case. So again, this um, allows us to really have visibility into those services. And this can also mean, you know, external care needs that are outside of your agency's walls, but Unite Us can also leverage the ability of internal referral, internal, um, you know, program referrals within your own organization and to help streamline all of that. So it can be pretty um, inclusionary as well as pretty dynamic when we think about how Unite Us can support both in and then outside the agency. 
And then this slide really, I just think is a good visual and kind of just, again, helps warm up our mind to think about what a potential client interaction or engagement can be when they are being connected or potentially walk in at one of your, you know, organization locations. And if you are enabled or, you know, set up with Unite Us, how that um, kind of interaction could take place within that client. So here we have a client, Tom, right, that shows up at a family clinic. And when he gets connected to Sue, the worker at that clinic, um, she's actually able to utilize Unite Us to gain Tom's consent and then look through the resources or the programs that are available to receive referrals um, through the Unite Us uh, network or again, through the platform. So again, just to kind of show that one client can come in for a particular need and then the power and leverage of that community network that we're building in Santa Cruz and across the state can really help support Tom in more ways than one as we learn more about him and what he um, may need support in. And before we transition into the uh, demonstration, I did want to include some slides related to our current on uh, boarded partners. So community providers that have been using Unite Us, again, to receive referrals, to help um, support more clients in the community and are having, you know, a good success within that, that referral partnership. So I have a few slides because of, you know, the Santa Cruz network has definitely experienced a lot of growth in the last six, nine, probably 12 months, I think was the last time we actually joined a, co a coffee chat. So it's a wonderful to see that growth. Um, but again, this deck will be shared out afterward. And so you'll be able to kind of review these partners. But I think it's a really exciting time in Santa Cruz specifically because of some key partnerships that we have activated and then how that's really supporting the general um you know, consensus between our community partners and wanting to kind of be a part of this, to try it out um, and to see how it can benefit um, their uh, their staff, their clients, um, et cetera. And we couldn't, you know, mention community partners without our um county and community customers. And so this slide um, allows us to see who we have as part of that grouping for Santa Cruz. So we're going to hear from Serving Communities Health Information Exchange in just a couple of minutes to share more about this exciting partnership. We um, activated the Pajaro Valley Unified School District um, just a couple of weeks ago to begin using Unite Us for the upcoming school year for all of their social emotional counselors um, to really increase mental health um, access and support for the, the school districts. So we're very excited about that. Um, we also have the Central California Alliance for Health um, using us with some great tie-ins with, within CalAIM, but then also just to really support their general um, member uh, needs. Um, and then our, our other healthcare partners, Kaiser Permanente and Dignity Health, again, also activated and using Unite Us in Santa Cruz uh, County to support their uh patients and to really just really hone in and embrace a uh, care coordination through a um, referral platform tool that is Unite Us. And so I'm going to now pivot into our, our demo, and then we'll hear from our partners um, at the end. I just thought it would be helpful for us to see the platform before our partners then maybe give some concrete examples of how it's been helping just to kind of help our, our framework. So for our United States partner experience, I want to... Um, be able to happily share that we have Becky Shoemaker from Serving Communities Health Information Exchange that's going to kick things off. And then we have Jessica from Park Rx. Just a friendly reminder for our speakers to just speak at a moderate pace since we do have our translators activated. Thank you so much. Becky, off to you. Hi, thank you. Um, I don't have slides today. Um, 
So I will just try and answer some of the questions, go over some of um, what Skyo is doing, how we are interacting with Unite Us, and then try and answer some of those data exchange framework questions as well. Um, so so uh, Skyo is happy that uh, we are partnering with Unite Us. Our goal is to bring together the social drivers of health along with clinical health and everything going on with a person for a complete whole person care view of that person in the community. So we have for over 26 years, we've been uh, serving as a health information organization in the community, bringing clinical data together and presenting a longitudinal patient record in our provider portal. So now we are going to be enhancing that data again with the social drivers of health information so that um, users can have that, that one person, one record view um, to support the, the person in the community. Um, so we are really working on breaking down those barriers and and the challenges for the data exchange, which kind of leads us to the conversation about the data exchange framework. And I don't know if everybody on this call is familiar with what the data exchange framework is, but let me just share one slide. Let me, um, can it, uh, yeah, let me just, I'm just gonna, thank you. I'm just going to share a slide. Um, okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I said I didn't have any slides, but I'll share this slide <laughs> since it came up during the call. Um, so the data exchange framework in California is an initiative that's coming out from the state for organizations to share data to support the whole person care um, needs of for patients so that everybody has the data that is needed to um, care for that person and have the best possible outcome. So this okay. is from the- um, Becky, can I interrupt for just a second? Sure. Is there a slide that you're wanting to show us? Oh, is it not sharing? Mm -mm, we see your, we see you and your background. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. Sorry, Nicole. Um, okay. Let me try that again. There we go. How about now? Yes. Now okay. we see it like um, it's not in slideshow mode. So I don't know if you if that matters to you. Um, yeah, I was just going to. That's totally yeah. fine. Yeah. OK. Um, so anyways, so the 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 whole goal and the whole um, premise is around the data exchange framework is so that every California including the health and human service departments, um, have timely and secure access to their electronic information to address their health needs and social needs. So the data exchange framework is a, it's a, the rules of the road. It's not technology, but it is driving the rules of the road in order for these data exchange to happen between these organizations. Um, I'll just jump to another slide. I'm not going to go. This is a, I'm happy to share this slide deck after. This is a slide deck that we have prepared for um, information, more detailed information on data exchange framework. So I won't go through them all since, um, but let me just point out a few slides. Let's go here. So it's improving public health. It's a CALIM initiative. It will it foster care. All these different types of um, services that a person may have. The idea is to bring this all together, all this information together. So the data exchange framework um, will support this. It is a requirement um, by January of 2024. And 
let's just go here. This is the guiding principle. So really focusing on advancing health equity, again, making data available, um, supporting the whole person care. This one is key. Individuals should have access to their data. Um, and it, again, just the data exchange. Um, and all this data needs to adhere to specific standards around data. So making sure that we are following HIPAA part two um, and that all the standards are, are being met between the clinical data and the non-covered entity data, which is your community-based organizations. And we're gonna pr provide accountability. So how this all fits in with SCIO is that SCIO will become a, we are, a, will be a qualified HIO, which is a QHIO, which is part of the requirements for an HIO to be able to um, participate in the data exchange framework. And our partners can sign on to be, um, to exchange data. There is, mandates on who has to sign. So your hospitals have to sign, physician organizations, skilled nursing facilities, healthcare plans, labs, and psychiatric hospitals. They all have to sign the data exchange um, agreement and, and start sharing that data by January 1st. Um, I will add, there are other organizations that are not mandated at this time to sign the data sharing agreement, but they are certainly welcome to. And I will, enter, I will also just let you know that there is some funding opportunity through this data exchange framework. If you do sign the data share agreement, there is some funding for those integration costs so that you can connect with an HIE and get some of that integration cost covered through a grant process. So if anybody is interested in information about that, I'm happy to um, uh, just email me and I can get you more information and guide you through that process. We have uh, some consultants we're working with that will um, help you on board and get a grant application in. The next grant is on October 1st. So. I'm going to pause there for just a minute and see if there are any other questions or specifics around the data exchange framework that I can possibly answer. And I'll quit sharing because I can't see the chat. I think the one question I see is from Sherry that asks, will Unite Us disappear with the data exchange framework or will we have two systems? The data exchange framework is not a technology. It is the rules of the road. What it does is it allows, it HUDs all the policies to connect all of these data sources and to bring them into a system. So Unite Us of is a very key component of this work so that we can provide that data on a whole person care perspective. So data sources don't go away and it's not a technology, it's not a platform, it's not a portal, it's a manner and a mechanism in order for data to be shared between organizations and types of services. Unite Us is the closed loop referral. We work with other EHRs and many systems. The HIE currently connects about 48 different systems and brings all that data into one um, record for the patient, one person, one record. Any other questions? Becky, could you say a little bit more about what SCIO's role is in supporting agencies to use Unitas? 
Yes. So Skyo is um, working to, with Unite Us to bring the community together um, and to really, again, open, break down barriers, share data, have a community view of, of the person. And we are working um, to support to support the helped out a utility model in in Santa Cruz community, which is one person, one record, uh, whole person care. So through Unite Us, um, we are able to collaborate with them. And as they're bringing on the CBOs, we can uh, do a better job in sharing that information um, and bringing, bringing the community together. Breaking down those silos. And Becky, I'm not sure if maybe this could be a, a follow up um, document or like a follow up resource, but it potentially if uh, Skyo is able to to share out those spark sponsored partners or those priority partners that you all have identified that will be moving forward with uh, Unite Us. I think that will be really helpful, uh, relevant information. So again, the broader community can see um, and can assess again the the value um, of, of them also kind of coming forward and, and joining Unite Us. Sure. Um, and I will let you know, I don't know if anybody's on the call. I think Lens on the call, but uh, we just onboarded with the Santa Cruz. We just onboarded the Santa Cruz County Behavioral Health Department um, for Unite Us and Two One One United Way. Just onboarded through Skyo with Unite Us, so we have a collaboration there. Um, on our website, we have all of our participants. Um, and, and, and unite us, I, yeah, we can share while well, it was shared in the slides. I think Katie, you brought it up or Nicole brought it up earlier, the slide where the partners are on there. Um, many of those partners are participants under Skyo as well, but so the importance of Skyo and onboarding, is, is again, this data share to bring all the data together. In Unite Us, you can see referrals if you are the receiving or, or if you're the sender, if you're participating in that referral, but you can't see referrals on a person unless you are engaged in that referral. Through Skyo, you will be able to see the community view and you will know what referrals that that patient person has regardless if you're a participator and you're not. So sometimes it's helpful to have that view and understand where the person is seeking care in the community and who is engaged, who are the case managers, who's participating with this patient. We get asked that more than anything, who is involved in the care of this person? And just being able to share that across all these referrals and get that information from Unitas. That being said, if you have not onboarded with Unite Us through Skyo and you are a Skyo partner, you you might get Unite Us is going to be reaching out to ask you to share your data with us. And that is in full support of getting that data and presenting the whole person care in the community. Does that help answer? at that level. I think Just so. reviewing my notes here and seeing if there is anything else we wanted to touch on. I so think yes, there are two systems. Um, there is the Unite Us and the HIE. Um, so you can log into the Unite Us through their portal. If you are an HIE user, you can also reach the Unitas portal through the HIE. So um, if you're already going to Skyo and you're logging into the portal, you can easily get to Unitas. We are in process of working on a, a single sign-on 
between the HIE and Unitas, which would also pass the patient context and take you right into that patient record. That isn't fully implemented yet, but that's to come. Who manages consent? Good question, Patrice. So consent, Unitas will ask, you, you must get a consent for all persons that you are uh, creating a referral for in Unitas. That consent choice will be passed back to Skyo um, with the data that we get from Unitas, and we will present that in the HIE as well. The HIE also has consents for clinical data. So Skyo is managing consents on behalf of all of our partners and showing the most recent current consent in the platform. But you have to share your data with Shio in order for us to be able to do that level of um, management. Client manager. Oh, sorry, just doing a little time check because I want to make sure that we also can hear from Park Rx and Jessica. Um, but I do appreciate all the questions and the information. So again, keep them coming in the chat and then we'll make sure that we can uh, answer either one off or um, at the end when we do our wrap up Q&A. Great. Thank you. Wonderful. So thank you, Becky. And so I will now pass this over to Jessica. Um, just as a brief reminder, so Jessica is here. Um, well, I'll let Jessica introduce herself, um, but thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jessica Beebe. I am a recreation supervisor for Watsonville Parks and Community Services and a working group member of Park Rx Santa Cruz County, which is a multi-sector initiative to promote clinical prescriptions of parks and recreation programs. As part of Parker X Santa Cruz County's work, the city of Watsonville partners with Salud Par La Gente, medical providers uh, to connect patients with outdoor opportunities currently being prescribed through the Unitas platform. So today I'm sharing a snapshot of our experience using Unitas. So Salud is sort of, we've decided they're a super user of Unitas. <laughs> they utilize the referral system to help address a variety of patient needs. While we had not used the system at all prior to November of 2022. So we had some catching up to do uh, when we decided that we would modify our process for receiving referrals through the Unitas system. So that being said, uh, we found the Unitas platform rather user friendly. Uh, we were able to easily input all of our various Parker X offerings so that Salud could access them in Unitas. And we were able to quickly learn to receive and manage referrals. So one of the components that we like is that we can return referrals if it's not the best match. For instance, if we get, uh, if a patient is a six-year-old who's referred for a program and the program actually is for eight to 12-year-olds. So in that case, we can reject the referral and we can send a note to Salud staff, letting them know um, that this is, is not the right fit, but suggest other options for a proper referral. And the nice thing about that is that it, and what we like really about Unitas uh, in this whole referral process with Salute is it really helps us track the data in Unitas regarding actual programs that successfully receive referrals and which patients participated in those programs. It also provides a nice centralized location for notes on a patient's referral that both Salute staff and our team can see which helps us communicate back and forth and just keep it nice and clean in one spot. So again, we, we find Unitas easy to navigate and a helpful tool to help us do the work that we do in our community. And we look forward to learning more about reporting and other features as we become more familiar with the Unitas platform. Um, but I'd love to turn it over to anyone from Salud Community Health Services team who's on the call today or any of our Parker X working group who might want to add any thoughts at this time. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Jessica. Uh, my name is Juan Carlos Vasquez. I work at Salud Para La Gente, and I supervise Community Health Services Department. 
And uh, we've been utilizing Unitas for, I don't know, like a couple of years, two or three years now. And it's great. Uh, we use it every single day. It's uh, very simple, user-friendly. And we really like the fact that it's a closed loop referral process. So it makes everything easier for us. Um, we also sometimes we don't use it to send like referrals. Sometimes we just go in there on my network and we just send text messages to our patients. And that's also very helpful. It's very simple, uh, easy to use. I, uh, I have um, admin rights. So for me to go in there and make changes to the platform to add or delete users, it's super easy, very straightforward. So we are very happy. Again, we use it every single day. So if any partner agency uh, has any questions about how to use it, uh, feel free to reach out to to us and we can help you. And yeah, that is great. So thank you. Hey everyone, this is Mariah Roberts, um, also with Parker X and County Park Friends. And I, I wanted to just add um, additionally that um, we are just so grateful to Salute. I think one of the things that um, has enabled us to really make the most of um, the Unite Us platform is um, is really the, the guidance that we have received as um, a partner uh, from the Salute staff. So I, I wanna just put that out there. Um, and also one just note that uh, we're now also rolling out with Santa Cruz Community Health and we're just learning, you know, there are different ways to use the platform. So the way that um, it works for Salute, it looks like it may be a little bit different for Santa Cruz Community Health, but we believe that um, the flexibility is there within the system to be able to um, tailor, you know, how we utilize the system for these two different partners and that's a really nice aspect so thanks Y'all hear me? I'm not sure if you can. I've been having some technical issues. Okay, I am Elizabeth. I work with the City of Watsonville Parks and Community Services Department. And so I've been using um, Unidas and it like paybacking on what Jessica and uh, Juan Carlos said. It's very easy to use. And one of my favorite features is that I can easily communicate with uh, Salud para la Gente and they can communicate with me and just like if they need an update on the case, we can easily use the chat feature and you know communicate with one another. Uh, but overall, Unitas is uh, user friendly, easy to use, easy to learn how to use it. But overall, it's been a great experience. Hi, and my name is Brenda. I work with County Park Friends, and also just as Elizabeth said and Jessica said. The platform is very easy to use, and I feel like it saves a lot of time and intake uh, when reaching out to families. So uh, all the information we need is already there for us. So, you know, our time is precious, our patient's time is precious. So anything that cuts back on time is super helpful. So, yeah, thank you so much. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, team. Um, is there anyone else ha that has some last minute tidbits or are we all set? Let's see, Becky's raised her hand. Go ahead, Becky. Yeah, I was just going to add that for our collaboration with Unitas, um, I've been working in the healthcare in, in Santa Cruz for almost 40 years. And it has amazed me how many organizations and services are available in Santa Cruz. And we would not know about many of them without Unite Us. So the partnerships are so important to have their experience and their outreach to bring the services together 
so that we are aware of everything available and we know where to refer these people and to be able to bring that data in and present that single record. So I just wanted to add how important Unitas has been for, especially for Skyo. We we have been in the clinical space for so long. And, you know, I used to say that I do healthcare. I don't know anything about it. There is so much that goes on beyond the clinical side. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Other questions or comments before we close out? Well, thanks to all of you for sharing this updated information and your experiences with it. And um, please reach out with additional questions you or your colleagues may have after the chat. But I will go ahead and turn it over to Nicole Young to close us out with some information about upcoming events. Thanks, Nicole. And do you, do you still have the slides? Can you put this up? Okay, so we have a number of events coming up in September and October, some more coffee chats. Um, the next one that we're hosting is next week, uh, focus on multi-solving for equitable health and well-being. So it's this concept of how can one solution actually address multiple needs or issues or core conditions as we started off describing in the beginning of today's session. Um, and then we uh, have a few more, um, I'll actually direct you to the website. And I think Gisela is posting um, a link to the core events website page where you can actually see full description of each of these events, the registration links. Um, some of you may have seen that yesterday we launched our inaugural core e-newsletter. We're gonna be sending out a full newsletter once a month and then periodic updates uh, with event announcements and registrations as they get confirmed. So if you're not already on our email list, um, we'll uh, encourage you to go, to go to the core website to sign up for that, because this is how we'll start uh, sending out regular information from now on instead of uh, from one of our personal email addresses. Um, and then I did want to call specific attention to that last item on the side there, the learn, do, share with core, designing for social systems. This is uh, one of the offerings in the Core Institute. It's, it'll be our second time experimenting with this model. We're basically creating a short-term community of practice around a specific topic or issue. And so um, this is a series of uh, workshops or webinars that we'll participate in together that's offered by Stanford Social Innovation Review and the Stanford uh, School for Design or D School. Um, so we're inviting a small group of people to participate in those workshops with us. That's the learn part and then meet for three more times after that as a community of practice to really practice putting those skills and concepts uh, into play. And so that's the do part. The share part is then uh, the uh, members of the community of practice will co-present with us at a future core coffee chat so that others can learn as well. Uh, we had some folks uh, participate, Mariah, if she's still here, participate in our very first learn do, learn, do share with core cohort that was focused on data visualization uh, last year. And so this is our second time doing this model. Um, so there is an application and a deadline for that. So I can encourage you to uh, go onto the core website and Gisela put the specific uh, for that event uh, into the chat. And then our last ask for all of you today is to um, fill out the feedback poll for today's session. We uh, appreciate hearing people's feedback about what worked well, what could be better. So I encourage you to either click on one of the links in the chat to go to the English version of the survey or the Spanish version, or you can, if you have your phone handy, um, you can scan one of the QR codes and fill it out. It's in SurveyMonkey. So we will also send out that link in the follow-up email, um, as well as the recording of today's session and the slides uh, probably take us a few days to be able to get to that. I think that brings us to the end of our session today. We'll hang out here for a few more minutes in case anybody does have more questions for 
Katie or Becky or any of the other partners that are currently using Unitas. Um, so we'll stay on for a few more minutes. But if, ever, if anyone else needs to leave at this point, you're welcome to do so. And I do see Patrice's hand is up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I just wanted to ask, um, I, I have some questions. We, uh, Prairie Front Street and we, our Healing the Streets team just kind of joined and has a, had a presentation. I was not able to log on to that, but we have been part of Unitas, but not using it for a while. I have some questions and I have some questions about our other team. And I'm just, I'm just wondering if I should be talking to like Becky or Katie or who would be a good person since you're here. Um, of course. Patrice, could you um, say again the organization you're part of? I'm sorry. Front, Front, Street. Front Street. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you can definitely set up time directly with me or Marisol, and we can definitely support you. Okay. So I'll put my email in the chat, and then feel free to um, to send me a note. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I actually have a question for Becky and or Katie and, and Marisol. Um, so if if organizations, if any of the organizations are participating in both the Health Information Exchange and Unitas, is do clients need to complete just one kind of universal consent to release it, or do they actually need to do two because there's like being able to share the digital information on Unitas, and then there's kind of the broader share information with all these participating service so, providers that are also. So Nicole, I'll I'll start with that. Unitas, they will. You do need to capture the consent in the Unitas tool when you are doing the referral. The health information organization is an opt out model meaning you are ex your data is shared electronically amongst your care team unless you explicitly opt out and that consent is obtained through your three providers so you when you go into your providers and you sign that notice of privacy practice in there is a statement that says that your data could be shared electronically. If you sign that, you are essentially opting in, although we don't require an option. Um, so you have to explicitly opt out and say, I do not want my data shared electronically. And again, that is done at your point of care. And SCIO receives those consents in a, in a various manner. We have um, are, are integrated with many of the systems where it comes in in what's called an ADT message, which is a demographic me uh, message. And that message can contain consent. And so it's all automated. The systems can, the system will know when you're opting in or choosing to change that consent to opt out. If we don't have an integration, it is done through our support from the clinician's office, from the provider's offices. Great, thank you for that clarification. Yeah. I just wanna say thank you to Katie, to Becky, to Jessica, Mariah, Juan Carlos, Brenda, who else uh, came today to, to speak? It was very helpful to hear from some of our community partners about your experiences with Unitas. Yes, thank you all so much for your time. And again, thank you so much for, for giving us a uh, space today through this agenda. Very appreciative. Um, and in the follow-up that Nicole will send out, my information is included and I also put it in the chat. So feel free to book a meeting with me. And then that registration form is what each partner would fill out to join. Um, and then you'll walk, we'll do a walkthrough of all of that together.